This is completely crazy because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how AI sent me a client worth $5,382.86 on total autopilot. This video is going to be for you if you provide services, coaching, if you're selling online courses, yada, yada, yada. So this is going to help you. First of all, this is an email that I got on the 8th of February. So this was roughly six months ago by the time I'm recording this video. And it actually came from a client who bought all of my courses. He became one of my paid recurring coaching clients. And he's also someone who implements what I'm telling him to do. So in sum, that's the perfect type of client that you want. You want people who buy your stuff, who buy more of your stuff, and who actually also implement your stuff. Let me just show you how I actually did it. So you've probably heard that, hey, artificial intelligence is killing content creation. It's destroying everything. It's going after our jobs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So truth is, if you've already tried and dabbled around with artificial intelligence, you probably saw that the content is garbage. And most people actually use AI to create even more garbage content. So they flood the internet with a bunch of, with, with a bunch of nonsense. And there are some of them who are actually making views, building an audience, etc. I was in the same situation when I first started using AI. And I thought that, hey, this is certainly not something that I can use in my business, simply because the, the content is garbage. But I've been writing over 200 hours with AI for the time being. And I can guarantee that everything like you see around, I only can write garbage content and AI is actually killing content creation is nothing else than a propaganda, it's a narrative. And most people are getting brainwashed, believing that this is true. Instead of whining, you could adapt. And the choice is basically yours. You can actually get started with a chat GPT or a cloud subscription that only costs $20 a month and actually start using it the right way. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do this in this video. I really like to think about AI not as someone who or something that can replace my work, but it can enhance it. And that's basically the difference, right? It's an assistant. It's not here to replace you. If AI can replace you, then your work is basically worthless and it's, it, it's meaningless. If you have an experience, if you have knowledge, if you have skills, then it's about using AI to actually enhance your work and actually make it faster and make you more efficient so that you can actually have more time to come up with better insights, better solutions for your clients. That's what it's all about. So let me just quickly transition here over to my iPad to actually show you how this actually works. So most people think of AI kind of a black box, right? So they think that, okay, this is somehow spitting out content and... We don't really know like, how this works. Behind all that, so what's actually inside this black box, it's pretty simple. It's nothing else than math. So I'm pretty bad in math, so I'm not going to explain exactly how this works in terms of mathematical formulas, etc. But basically what you want to understand is that AI is basically nothing else than a prediction machine, which means that it's fed with a lot of dots, with a lot of information. And then what it does, it simply looks at probabilities. It looks at basically chunks of text and see, okay, if we have this type of text, what is the highest probability to actually complete this text? And then basically, this is how it actually starts actually writing. It's simply looking at the probabilities. So now comes the question, okay, if this is how AI works, what if we could actually influence those dots right here, those learning points? How And, and this basically goes back to how can you actually feed AI with your information, with your offers, with your unique insights, right? For that, we have to understand how, is, how AI is, is actually trained and where does the data, and where does the data ultimately come from? Well, AI is trained on open source knowledge, right? On things that are available for free on the internet. And this is why you see why so much AI content is basically garbage. <laughs> the reason why it has been trained on a lot, on a lot of garbage content. <laughs> so that's the simple answer to this. So now how is it possible to actually influence on that? 
the first thing that you have to understand is that like companies like OpenAI, what they have these kind of crawlers, right? So what they do is they basically look at all the ocean of information and really think of them as some kind of casting nets, right? So what they are doing, they are simply just trying to fish some specific information so that then they can pass it over to AI to actually train it, right? Which means that AI is trained on a lot of content that you see on different websites. So now the thing is, okay, like how can I actually make my content appear at the top of the surface right here so that those AI crawlers can easily pick it up? And if you actually think about this, there is nothing really new about that because this is what has been used for dozens of years in terms of SEO, right? So when you actually write an article, when you create a piece of content that's optimized for SEO and that you show up at the top of the search results, this is how your website is going to get discovered, right? This is how actually crawlers find, find content on the internet, right? So basically you have one website that links to another website and that, that links to another website and this website links back to the other one. So this is like all the internet is nothing else than an interconnected kind of environment. This right now brings me to the SEO part, which means that if we actually go back to what my client mentioned is the fact that he went over to Perplexity, which is basically an AI search engine. And this is something that we're going to see also coming with search GPT. And you can actually ask it a specific question. It would basically crawl the web to give you some answers. So as you can see, can you find me a second brain system specifically made for content creators? And I, what do you see right here? You see my website with two different articles, right? And this is how actually he found me. And if you click at it, basically it redirects you to my website. And this is how you actually want to uh, use AI. You actually want to use AI and SEO together to start feeding AI with your information. So now how do you actually do this? Obviously, this first goes back to understanding the basics of SEO. So I've been doing SEO for over a decade. And what has always been working for me since then, I've always mis obviously made a ton of mistakes in the past. I got slashed by Google Penguin back in the 2000, I think, 12, 2013. I made a bunch of mistakes. I learned from those mistakes. And since then, SEO has always been remoting re pretty well. So in terms of SEO, you actually don't need a complicated SEO strategy, right? All you need is basically understanding a few key concepts. So the first concept is understanding that you want to go for low competition keywords. So SEO is really all about keywords, right? So you first are going to find low competition keywords, right? And these are going to be probably a little bit hard to find, especially at the beginning simply because you actually need to find things that people search for, but are totally underserved. So this is exactly what I did with my note-taking articles. As you probably know, I help experts monetize their content with, or monetize their knowledge with online content. So if you actually look at my different, let's say, content categories, I talk about email marketing, I talk about online course creation, right? And you already have all the top dogs um, who are ranking for this specific keyword. So there is really no chance for me to actually rank for those unless I go very specific on one specific thing. So as an example, if, you, if we go back, let's say to, to Google and search for something very specific, let's say a comparison between two autoresponders, let's say MailerLite versus ConvertKit. If you actually look at that, as you can see, there are already a bunch of you know, big websites out there, but I was still able to to land on page number one. So that's the first thing you really want to get. It's not about, let's say, oh, how to write an email or how to write subject lines. <laughs> Those are already saturated. So it's really all about finding an underserved segment in your industry. And at the beginning, I know this can be frustrating because if you assume that this is, let's say, your field of expertise, then you are going to find, you need to actually find a small, tiny subsection of that. So as an example, what I've done is basically with note taking because 99% of content creators are also note takers. They're taking notes. The problem is that their notes are a mess. I've been taking notes for over 10 years. I was completely, 
I thought it was a good idea to actually take notes, but at the end, I just found that, hey, I was never re- revisiting my notes. So I actually used that to start creating um, content about note taking. And guess what? It actually resonated. It actually started, it got me traction on platforms like Medium. And I got thousands and thousands of views and thousands of email subscribers simply based on that specific kind of content. I took a really small, tiny segment of my market and I simply talked about that in depth, right? This brings me then to the second thing. So once you actually understand and you find this this, this sub-niche, right, and those low competition keywords, the second step is actually building a cluster of content that serves the same purpose, right? So as an example, I have different examples on my website. So if we take the notes taking cluster, what happened is that I have different guides on different note taking apps. Let's say I have something about Obsidian, I have something about Notion and so on and so forth. I then also cover more in depth, some specific note taking methodologies like Para or the Zettel and so on and so forth. So this allowed me actually to start building that authority. And then I expanded that authority from this right here into something bigger. And then I started actually talking about email marketing and then started also about course creation and so on and so forth. So all this to say that it's, some people are going to say that, hey, SEO is that there is like no future in SEO, blah, 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 all that kind of thing. But I think that this is actually not true. And the best proof is that what I've just shown you, those are real life results. And if you actually look at, okay, like how this works in terms of the theory behind it, it makes perfect sense simply because this is how AI work. Things are moving fast. And if you actually want to stay competitive in today's industry, you simply have to update your, your knowledge constantly. And you also have to adapt, right? And you also have to embrace the novelty, right? You want to be fluid, right? You want to be flu- fluid in your thinking, fluid in, in your actions. And this is how you're going to survive. So if you actually want to learn how to leverage SEO so that you can then influence AI and actually find new clients for what you have to offer, then make sure to click the first thing in the description. It's a free SEO course that will walk you through the strategy that you can apply starting from today in your business. So I hope that this was helpful and I see you in the next one.